Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Alacho TV. Today we have a very interesting interview. And uh, welcome, Glenn Robert Ford, uh, to this interview. Um, you're a writer, filmmaker, actor, director. And also, uh, as we know, you just received awards from London Festival, Film Festival, uh, for a best short film and best first time director. So, um, you know, just first of all, I would like to say very welcome and pleasure to meet you. And uh, of course, maybe we should talk, ask you the first question about your movie, because it's very interesting to get to know uh, what inspired you to create this movie, uh, about this idea and everything what you would like to share about it. Well, first off, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Um, the awards that we did win were from Falcon International Film Festival in London. And it was for Best Short. It was for Best Debut Filmmaker. And uh, also uh, the lead of the film, Lance Liverpool, he won Best Actor. So it is an incredible honor to be acknowledged uh, for, the, for the performances uh, of my film. My film, The Fix, raises uh, substance abuse, alcohol abuse, domestic violence, and mental health awareness. And it also raises awareness to friends and family to do more while that person struggling is still alive rather than feel regret when they pass away. So it's, uh, it's definitely a film that hits a lot of households because a lot of people can relate to substance abuse and alcohol and even mental health. Um, and I just want to inspire those to lend a helping hand and do as much as they can. We know that it takes the individual to want to change, you know, despite all the help that they have. But if we can go to bed at night knowing that we did all we could to help, then that's the goal. And it definitely hits home for me because my father was an alcoholic and he passed away during the production of the film in 2018. And uh, this film is dedicated in my father's memory. Thank you so much, Glenn, for sharing this with us. And um, definitely, well, we spoke before the interview and you told us that it's, we cannot make decision for the person, but we have to do everything possible to try to help. And right. that's what counts. And that already says about your motivation a lot and about you as a person but could you tell us a little bit more about yourself as a human what kind of values do you live by and what moves you what drives you in life uh, in, in regards to values um, I'm a firm believer of uh, showing someone respect to get it I'm a firm believer of being humble and being nice to others um, you know Dwayne Johnson says this quote it's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. And I remember my mom saying that friendliness goes a long way. You know, um, the energy that you put out is the energy that you're gonna receive. And I'm a firm believer of positive energy. I like to associate myself with well-rounded individuals, creative people, down-to-earth people, because it just makes life uh, that much easier. And I think if everyone is on the same wavelength of positivity and kindness, then you can get a lot of great results from that. Yeah, for sure. That's that's you know that's exactly what we actually all understand that it should be spread this um, message about unity. And thank you so much, you know, again for for sharing it. Um, you know, I, uh, also when we were prepared for the interview, create a question for you. We met a very, very good quote, uh, which I really, really want to read it. Uh, what you said that when I perish um, from this, uh, this earth, I want to be known as someone that has made a contribution to humanity. Uh, I'm the hope of my ancestors. So it is my destiny to make the most out of my limitless life during this limited time. You know, uh, and I wanted to ask you the question, could you just share a little bit more 
why do you think it's very important to make a really important contribution uh, for the society? Why? Well, we've, we've come a long way uh, in regards to human civilization. Um, just look at the technology and the medicine that has advanced uh, for centuries. And I think it's our duty to keep pushing forward, you know, especially those who have children. I don't have children, but for the future, you know, uh, our predecessors have laid the foregrounds for us to excel and carry the baton, so to speak, and pay it forward to the next generation, especially if we want to keep uh, America, uh, human civilization afloat for the next few centuries. Um, if we all work together, of course, um, there's a lot of chaos and catastrophe and turmoil and a lot of uh, false information and fear mongering headlines to sway the opinion of certain people and to divide us. But I feel like if we all come together and find some common ground to bring us together uh, for the for the main objective and the main cause, main cause, then we can flourish and pass it on to our descendants. Yes, Glenn, thank you so much. And the, the thing you mentioned that technologies are really advanced, but are we using them to our maximum potential? Because many people say that technologies would allow us to make this world perfect where no one is struggling from hunger or lack of water or resources. We already have these technologies, we don't use them. So it's very important for us regular people to create this demand to use them the right way, right? Not just for our ego, but for uh, really benefit of the others. And in this regard, there is already this amazing thing happening where people from all over the world uniting and creating these conferences on which uh, bring up scientists and talking about the importance of unity of people in face of the climate change. And I would like us to watch this short clip from the conference, and then I would like to hear uh, your words, because I know you watched some of it too. On the threshold of a global systemic crisis, as we face planet-wide catastrophes, the largest scale unification of people in the known history of humankind. Organized by people from 180 countries of the world. Interpreted into 72 languages by volunteers. Thousands of rebroadcasts on streaming platforms worldwide millions of viewers around the planet. International Conference Global Crisis. This already affects everyone. On the Alatra platform, a total of 72 speakers spoke out during the 12 hour live broadcast. Leading scientists, world renowned opinion leaders, international activists and artists and governmental representatives raise the most acute issues of modern society. What is the development of artificial intelligence leading to? What is the real scale of the ecological crisis? What is not being discussed at any forum on climate about the causes of natural disasters not related to human activity? How are we destroying the planet's resources and its biosystem? What is happening to the Earth's core? What conditions are climate refugees in? How can humanity unite to build the creative society where life is the main value? This event is completely changing the way we look at the world because finally people are speaking the truth. And this is just the beginning. We invite you to the next conference on December 4th, 2021. Global Crisis. Time for the truth.
Okay, Glenn. Uh, so as you've seen, this short clip really just gives us a little bit of understanding what people talked about. But I know you've already seen the conference yourself and read about it. What could you tell us? What's what's your feedback on it? Um, in regards to global crisis, I feel like we should have gotten a hold of things a few decades ago. Uh, case in point, uh, climate change. You know, you have uh, various factories, fossil fuels, um, a myriad of air pollution. But I feel like I feel like the government is not taking it as serious as we should. Uh, we're responsible for a lot of marine life that has perished. We're responsible for a lot of wildlife that has perished, um, possibly through our own greed, um, our own uh, conceit, and our own um, oblivion. And I feel it, it, it takes more than a village for us to come together and, and put, our, put our feet down and try to make significant changes. We don't wanna wait until it's too late. And that's usually how people react. People usually react when things are too late or when things start to happen, when the crap hits the fan, so to speak. And we need to take action before things happen so that they don't happen. Yeah. And, to, and to piggyback your last question, Valerie, in regards to uh, the, me being the hope of my ancestors, you know, my ancestors, they died with the hope of a better life that never came. All of the things that I'm able to enjoy in my life, or all of the things that I'm able to experience in my life, they hoped and dreamed of. You know, they had, I'm a firm believer that most of my ancestors were enslaved and they had a pandemic for their entire lives. You know, they had pain, suffering, you know, they were fed scraps, they were beaten, they were murdered, they were hung, uh, they were raped. And I feel it's my duty as a descendant to be the representation of that hope and to pay it forward and to always acknowledge the pathway that my predecessors have have created for me and i feel like it's it's very it's very important for my lineage yeah thank you and you know like uh i also have a good question that um you know of course we can hope but what is a good news <laughs> that everything at our hands that you know if we unite and start acting toward to the goal yes. so that this hope will become a reality you know like because we start act this act toward this right the action the action definitely has to represent that hope in order for that hope to be a reality like as you said yeah. I, I firmly agree of course we got to put in that work but you have to have that blueprint first yeah for sure and you know what just uh, come to my mind also uh to to make it happen what i want to mention you know that now we have really just um at the same time what we have like huge problems but at the same time we have many opportunities because for now for example with you we met just you know, because we have internet and you know, we have connections. So that's what is making uh, uh, happen right now all over the world. People can connect it, you know. Before we didn't have this opportunity. We just sat, uh, you know, in a different part of the world and we even didn't know that we exist, you know. <laughs> so now, this right. is an amazing thing. Yeah, and I want uh, to ask you the next question, which is uh, actually dedicated to the Project Creative Society, which is 
actually it's thanks to this project we met each other you know because it's like just i wanted to really get to know your opinion you know and it's really interesting so and uh you know the main uh, i also wanted to mention you know the idea about creative society also that um this is a format of society that um you know on the first place is a human life not like money like in our a format society nowadays like consumeristic format of society you know that we put um, like the benefit in the first place but the creative uh, society idea it's the idea where human life first if we respect human life you know our life our close one all people on earth so that this format totally changing every field of or field of life and um uh, what is I also wanted to mention that already right now millions of people united around this idea and uh, from like 180 countries you know coming together create these conferences because uh, people you know start to take this responsibility to themselves back you know to not wait like you said that someone should do something for us no it's uh, it's our life it's our society it's like nothing it's right separation like we and society you know and the main question I wanted to ask you how do you envision creative society uh, at your uh, view how it should look like for you the society where you really will feel happy and you will wish for all people on our planet how how I would what's a perfect society for me you're asking me um you know, we're all born to love. And at some point, certain people are raised to hate. So it has to be, there's definitely a point where the love transitions to hate. And I know it takes, it takes a lot of work to convince a certain group of people to love when they're raised on hate, you know, and they pass it on. But in a perfect society, for me, obviously, we all have to come together and come to an understanding. In order for us to progress as, as humans, we all have to sit down and have a discussion and have some dialogue. If there's no dialogue, there's no progress. If there's no progress, there's no results. So there has to be some sort of common ground to sit two opposites down and have some dialogue. Yeah, for but, sure. but a perfect society, obviously for me, would just everyone has a full understanding of one another. Uh, we may not have to agree about everything, but as long as we respect each other and we prioritize human life because there's a lot of crime out there. There's a lot of people that are hurt emotionally. There's a lot of people that, that react to certain things a lot differently than we, how we would react. There's a lot of mental health um, issues. Um, healthcare is crucial. Certain places certain places go above and beyond to take care of that patient some places not so much so if we were all to set a blueprint out everywhere and make sure that everyone is on their p's and q's they cross their t's and dot their i's in every single medical facility and every single community and every single um political office if everyone comes to a mutual understanding and they prioritize human life, then that would be a perfect society. When they prioritize natural medicine, herbal medicine, the earth has provided us with so many things to cure our body of optimal health, as opposed to putting chemicals in our body that may help, that may help disease and sickness, but it comes with a price because there's side effects. There may be side there may be side effects to herbal medicine, and and certain spices. 
but it's not as detrimental as a chemical. You know, the body may react differently towards it, but if we were to prioritize medicine, human life, uh, we treated everyone equally. You know, we all breathe the same air. We all bleed the same. So should, we should all be treated the same. Life is very precious. And for some people, it could be very short. But in a perfect, success, in perfect society, peace, humanity, tranquility, progress for the future. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I just wanted to add a few words, you know, that, you know, now you just mentioned all those things which actually exist in the eight foundation of creative society. Because how they born, that, you know, just people answer the same question. You envision, you know, the society you would like to live in. And of course, everything what you mentioned, it should be, you know, there. Um, and actually what also people all over the world were talking about it, you know, so it's again, just proof that we all actually want the same thing, you know, just the only thing we need, we really need to implement this idea and unite around ideas, you know, to understand, as you said, and listen each other and start this dialogue, you know, to yeah. really, really uh, implement it in the real life. Absolutely. Yes. That was a beautiful answer. And thank you so much for saying about the blueprint, uh, because, you know, as a human life without the goal doesn't make any sense. There has to be something we go in for in this life. As a society, we have to have this goal, too. And that's what we're lacking right now. And that's what making so much crisis and drives people into alcohol and drug abuse. They don't see what are we going to. So this blueprint, it would give, make make so many people, you know, to obtain the uh, power to actually move toward to and by peaceful means only it's it's obvious that people are rejecting any sort of violence no one wants uh, to live and have anything to do with it we all want to live peacefully and in mutual respect and that's 99 percent of people we've been surveying during this more than a decade survey worldwide and when we ask a person who never heard about the creative society uh, to just describe this blueprint this is exactly what we get in the person starts <laughs> basically describing the eight foundations just like you did right now and that's where warms my heart that actually proves that we're going in the right direction uh how do you think it's uh uh, responsi responsibility on those who are leading our society, on those who are uh, having lots of followers. Do you think those people are more responsible for it, or do you think it's each person's responsibility to equally contribute to spreading this information that we can build this world instead of just dreaming about it? Um, it would be nice to have you know people that have a significant following to uh, promote you know, equality and, and to promote the prior, prioritization of human life. But we all know that, I mean, it's not their job, they're not obligated to do so, but it would be nice if they were to prioritize uh, the promotion of human life and human decency and respect and love. Um, but that just, it all depends on the individual, you know, how they are. You know, you could have a celebrity, you could have a celebrity who's down to earth, who's caring. Someone like Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio is a huge international superstar and he cares about the environment. So if we have more people, and Dwayne Johnson, who is, who I, I've met and worked with, he is humble, he is gracious. And if we had more people like Dwayne Johnson and Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, people that have a significant following to pay it forward in regards to human decency and the climate and how we treat each other, then I feel like we would be in a better place. 
it also takes, you know, those uh, billionaires and those politicians um, where there's a lot of corruption to have that same mindset. We all, like I said, we all have to be on the same page. Some people want to see the good in humanity. Some people don't care about humanity and they only care about greed. So that we have to make we have to make some significant changes in that regard. Yeah, and I really, you know, like your words that I just for sure agree that you know the responsibility of it, like and in each individual person, you know, because yeah, that's true. Uh, the only thing, you know, um, uh, as you mentioned, like some celebrities, well-known people, uh, for them, it's just the responsibility, you know, because they have many followers. So they can, you know, use this power to spread their, you know, the message. Uh, but of course, first of all, uh, it all depends on each person and we should do it. And, you know, mm, I just wanted to like, in the end of our, our interview, I would like to ask you, you know, um, maybe your personal message to all people, uh, what each of us can do, you know, um, to really build such a society, to build a creative format of society. What, can you just share some inspiration, you know, you know to people, so, so that some words, some very important message to people all over the world. Give respect to get it in return. You are, the energy that you put forth is the energy that you will receive. So if you put someone with, capacity to love, you'll, you'll get that in return. If you approach someone with the capacity to hate, then that's what you'll receive. That's as simple as, it's as simple as that. I, I, really, I really believe that what you put out is what you'll get. It, it, for example, if you embark on a fitness journey, right? And you follow the strict diet, you work out hard, you're disciplined, you stay away from all of the foods that don't contribute to your fitness goals. If you are that dedicated and you put in the work, your body will react to it and you'll get the results that you wanted. But it all, it all depends on the amount of work that you put forth to get that body that you want. So the same goes, maybe a different sort of energy, but when you're communicating with someone, if you're communicating with someone in a calm manner, they, most likely they'll respond in a calm manner. They'll give you a calm response. But if you approach someone aggressive, then they're going to be aggressive as well. It's all about energy. And I'm very big on energy. And I, and I feel like it's, it's, um, it reciprocates. So the energy that you put forth is the energy that you will receive. Thank you so much for your message. And I'm sure that, you know, it's, Mm, it's the truth, you know, which we really need to share with other people so that other can listen and uh, also think about it, you know. And uh, thank you so much to be with us today. And it's Thanks. really, really interesting to communicate with you, to get to know you more as a human being, as a, you're also professional side too. And thank you so much for your actions. Thank you to participate, your participation today in this interview. And uh, for our years, uh, Glenn Robert Ford. And uh, he is a writer, filmmaker, actor, director. So um, we were happy to meet you. 
and get to know your vision about creative society and the situation in our world too. And uh, it's very interesting to get to know your values. And um, wish you to see you with us again. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to sit here with you remotely and to discuss uh, creative society and, um, and to speak about humanity and, and how we can move forward as humans. Thank you so much. And we're looking forward to uh, hearing more about your next future projects and to wish you a great success with the filmmaking. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Valerie and Tyler. Thank you so much. Be well.